Welcome back, everybody. Sounds of the Revolutionaries Band on the musical Dub Attack at Channel One Studios. Channel One Studios, a huge source of dub through the second half of the 1970s into the 1980s. This is part five of my look at the history of dub. Be sure and check out the previous episodes if you haven't. As the dub explosion kicked off, a plethora of LPs began being released, dub LPs from various producers, various studios. It was inevitable it would start crossing over to a larger audience outside of uh, the uh, niche reggae label, niche reggae market. The first one to appear on a major label was Burning Spears' Garvey's Ghost, which contained was a full-length dub version of his classic Marcus Garvey LP. But that LP was remixed in London for a UK audience, a larger international audience. The second dub LP to appear was actually the first one to feature an authentic Jamaican mix. And it had actually been around a little bit before Garvey's Ghost on a pre-release version. But when it appeared on Virgin Records in 1977, it was the first one to hit number one on the UK charts with authentic Jamaican dub. That album was Vital Dub credited to Well Charged, or Well Charged, sometimes used as a alternative name for the Channel One house band, The Revolutionaries. This album contained versions of several tracks from the Mighty Diamonds classic Right Time album, which had appeared in 1976. That album, and particularly the title track, with the drum crack in the intro, kicked off a style of uh, reggae drumming, reggae rhythm called Rockers. Uh, which was uh, largely focused around Sly Dunbar's drum beat with a what was called a double drumming or double tap on the uh, on the rims and uh, just a, a more aggressive driving sound that came to be known as rockers and would dominate the reggae uh, the reggae world for the next several years. That rhythm was laid down by the Revolutionaries Band, which did feature Sly Dunbar on drums, as well as on bass, either uh, Robbie Shakespeare, the two of them would, uh, would have a long-standing partnership that continues to this day, or Ranchy McLean on bass, and kind of a rotating cast of other players, some of them called from Bunny Lee's session band, the Aggravators. Many of these producers would have their own, uh, their own house bands, just uh, drawn from the pool of Kingston, Jamaica session players and, uh, and given their own unique names, as well as uh, backed up with a, uh, a majestic horn section featuring Tommy McCook on sax, uh, Bobby Ellis, Herman Marquis, various other horn players, Tommy McCook, founding member of the Scatolites. So the Channel One studio had been set up in the early 70s Took a while to really uh, to really kick off into high gear until they started, till the Revolutionaries Band coalesced around 1975 and stumbled upon that uh, that rockers rhythm, that hard driving rhythm, which uh, the Channel One Studio they had taken a bit of time to uh, to set the sound up just the way they wanted it. Uh, the Channel One was founded by four Chinese Jamaican brothers, the Hu Kim brothers, with Joseph or Jojo as kind of the, the head of the family, head of business, but uh, brother Ernest taking more of a hands-on technical role. And uh, they took a bit of time getting the right mix of studio equipment, right balance of mics, uh, placement of instruments, just the right balance of sound they wanted with a particular emphasis on the drums and the bass to the forefront. These was, records would be mixed for uh, maximum impact when play, when uh, spun on sound systems. The great DJ Iroy had a, a good deal of input into the early uh, setup of the studio, the early sound and the engineering aspect, as well as Ernest Hukim would be uh, the main engineer for several years. The original engineer was uh, Sid Buckner, the great Sid Buckner, with Ernest Hukim taking over from him. By 1975, all the elements were in place. The Revolutionaries Band was together, the, uh, the right lineup of artists, 
and the hits started cranking out, beginning with The Mighty Diamonds, The Right Time. It was only inevitable that dub versions would begin appearing, and Vital Dub was uh, just one of many. I'm going to run through some of the Channel One dub sets that began appearing. Kicked off with Musical Dub Attack. Many of these early dub sets from around 1976, 1977, uh, very, very limited releases. They would have labels like Well Charge, Well Charge label from Channel One. An early one that appeared was Earthquake Dub. It's a reissue from the Hot Pot label. This was actually produced by Aussie Hibbert. A lot of the dub LPs we'll be featuring today would be produced by uh, Joseph Hukum himself, as well as, uh, as well as putting out their own product on their own labels, like Hitbound, like Well Charged, like Channel One itself, the generic Channel One label. Uh, the Channel One studio would become a favored uh, recording studio for many other producers in reggae in Kingston. Uh, from the latter part of the 70s into the 80s, it seems like you can hardly pick up a reggae record without seeing Channel One in the credits. So Earthquake Dub was a very early one, very limited release, Hot Pot reissue from a few years ago, Earthquake Dub. Some of these early albums just had very plain titles, Sata Dub, Strictly Roots, Disco Mix, Well Charged Label. Very, uh, very hard to find originals of these. These are all uh, recent reissues through DKR, Deeper Knowledge Records, out of New York. Revival Dub Roots Now, Full Charge. Uh, many of these dub LPs from um, Channel One, while not necessarily being known from a mixing standpoint, they're, uh, they're popular on the strength of the rhythms that they used. Channel One would become extremely uh, proficient in Re, uh, reinterpreting, reusing old rhythms from uh, reggae's past, which was then fairly recent, going back to the late 1960s or so, uh, particularly the rhythms of Studio One, which led to a bit of friction between the, uh, the two, two, between uh, Studio One's Cox and Dodd and Joseph Hukum, uh, which the Channel One name itself was partly an homage, homage to, uh, to Studio One but became famous for reusing a lot of these rhythm tracks, updating them with that rocker sound, which was a much more aggressive, much more militant sound, which suited the times of the 1970s as Jamaica descended into uh, economic and political chaos, violence in the streets, and uh, the Revolutionaries House Band, you can tell right from that name, kicking a, taking a very political stance, very militant, revolutionary, and they played up this image on some of the 12-inch single sleeves. Images of dreads charging into battle. Revolutionaries in dub. And it's worth noting, uh, while I tend to focus on LPs in these videos, it's worth noting that, uh, again, that uh, all of the 7-inch singles, the 12-inch singles, when they started to become in fashion, would all feature dubs on the flip of the single or somewhere in the mix there. So typical, one of the big hits from Channel One, Leroy Smart's Ballistic Affair on the Well Charged label, and of course featuring Dub on the flip. But Channel One certainly well served in the Dub album department. Uh, many of these albums from a mixing standpoint would range somewhere between uh, kind of basically straight instr instrumentals to light dubs or, um, or uh, more, more full-on dubs. One of the ones that's more on the instrumental side was a combination LP with Bunny Lee's Aggravators, Aggravators Meet the Revolutionaries at Channel One Studios. Again, that very militant combat image. And this just takes half a side of uh, Bunny Lee tracks, half a side of Channel One, and uh, there you go. One of the most iconic dub albums to appear was Revolutionary Sounds. Again, this is around 1976, 1977-ish. Uh, at some point, someone's cut out the center of a, the cover image of Che Guevara, Guevara there. Again, on the Well Charged label. And uh, many of these song titles, instrumental titles, again, Revolutionaries, Earthquake, Leftists, 
victory. Again, playing up that uh, very militant, combat-oriented image which suited the, the times as Kingston descended into chaos. One of the tunes that appeared on the well-charged label was called Angola. Angola actually used the darker shade of black rhythm, which was originally laid down at, uh, at Studio One in 1968 by Jackie Matu and the Soul Vendors and featured the melody from the Beatles' uh, Norwegian Wood, retitled Angola for the Revolutionaries' version. And the dub, and these are only, uh, these dub albums I'm going to show, just a handful. There's many more reaction in dub. The Revolutionaries appeared on the Cha Cha label. This is around 1977 still. Junkanoo dub, The Revolutionaries. Again on Cha Cha. Cha Cha label. 29 Maxfield Avenue, Channel One, remixed engineers, Ernest Hukim, long running engineer, as well as uh, there would be many other mixing engineers that would sit at the mixing desk at Channel One, like uh, Crucial Bunny, like Maximilian, Solji, many others, but Ernest Hukim kind of uh, doing the bulk of the mixing in the 1970s. A second volume of Aggravators Meet Revolutionaries would appear toward the end of the 70s, part two. This is on the Micron label. Classic dubstermental, sometimes called, or instra dub. Very light dubs. Uh, one of the ones for other producers. These are tracks from uh, the producer Linval Thompson, Negria Love Dub. Appeared on Trojan label, 1978-ish on this one. Negria Love Dub. One that received only a very limited release at the time and would appear later on in reissue format through the Hot Milk label, Boss Man's Dub. You have an original of this, it's about a grand, worth about a grand, very limited release. Again, Linval Thompson Productions, Boss Man's Dub, featuring the revolutionaries. A later one would be Goldmine Dub, very early LP release on the Greensleeves label. Only the fourth one, Grell 4, Greens or Goldmine Dub, Ja Lloyd Productions, as well as many other dub albums under their own revolutionaries name. They would do a very, uh, various other uh, marketing gimmicks, including bonus dub LPs. The great, uh, the classic Cool Roots, Harmony Roots album from Channel One, again on the Cha Cha label, included Cool Roots dub as a bonus disc. Again, all the revolutionaries, countless number of sessions. They did the same thing with the Mighty Diamonds Deeper Roots, a later set from the Mighty Diamonds, following on from the Right Time album, included bonus dub album. So two record set for the price of one, uh, various other sets would appear for other producers, as I said, became the number one studio for other producers through the 1970s into the 1980s. This one appeared as King's Dub for uh, the Jaw Man label, Manzi Swabi. Again, just the revolutionaries laying down the rhythm tracks, just not appearing under their own, uh, their own label, not a Hukum Brothers production. For producer Donovan Germain, version of uh, Cultural Roots, the group Cultural Roots, Revolutionary Sounds in dub. Again, the Revolutionaries. Can't, uh, can't basically pick up a reggae record from the late 70s, it seems, without finding the Revolutionaries. This is one of the more iconic albums. I don't have it with a sleeve, but it is called I Came, I Saw, I Conquered. Pre-release by channel, or release by channel one. Again, on the instrumental side, and this is the CD version with the cover. Came, I saw, I conquered. There's been various other, uh, various compilations focusing on the dub side of Channel One. Pressure Sounds put out one called Dub Sound, as well as one called Maxfield Avenue Breakdown. Blood and Fire Records put Jawman All-Stars in the dub zone. 
and plethora of singles, all of which contain dub. As this one, Revolutionaries, IRA, SNCC, it's not actually IRA, the correct song is SNCC, and this is actually nothing other than the Guns of Navarone theme song, which was laid down by the Scatolites, their version in 1965, updated by the Revolutionaries for a later time in the more updated rocker sound, and again, of course, featuring Tommy McCook on horns, who had played on the original. So, huge explosion of dub coming from Channel One Studios uh, through the 1970s into the 1980s when the sound would begin to change again and the Revolutionaries house band who had cut such a fantastic amount of music began to fade and would be superseded by a later session band cutting uh, many dub albums at Channel One. That band would be known as the Roots Radix with a, a harder, even more uncompromising sound than that of the, uh, the revolutionaries and the militant rockers sound. So that has been my look at the dub side of Channel One. I have done a, a broader look at Channel One in the past. This will be, my dub series will be continuing in future episodes. Be sure and check those out and cheers.